Hey guys, and this is just a video that I really decided that I really wanted to do. So as you know, the TCG banlist for October is coming up and everybody is super excited. So I decided to maybe just stop by one more time and revisit all the cards that I wanted to go ahead and talk about. And uh, I decided to go ahead and do a top five video. So these, this video right here is the top five thing, top five hits that I would like to see on the October 2014 TCG ban list. So that include that's just hits, you know, it's not anything going back up, just things that are going down. And these things are definitely things that I would love to see. If all of these things happen to be on the list, I would just be overjoyed. But if we can get a couple of them, then I would just be totally fine as well. So before we begin, I want to address something. If you guys have been on my channel and you guys know me well, you guys know I hate with a passion, probably my most hated deck in Yu-Gi-Oh right now. I hate Infernities. And on my list prediction, I predicted that, uh, you know, our dream would get banned. And I, you know, I was kind of going off of maybe just, you know, they wouldn't, they won Worlds, therefore, you know, Konami might kill the deck. And also my hate of it also. I think that maybe, you know, with the, with the banning of Soul Charge, I think that might just be enough. You know, I'm not sure how far Konami wants to take it. and. Yeah, that probably wasn't the best prediction. You know, limited to one, I wouldn't mind that. But banned, I wouldn't. Mind, I wouldn't get. I would not lose any sleep over Infernities getting hit on this upcoming list. So, uh, I just, I just, just know that anything Infernity related is not on this top five list. Cause I know you're probably trying to sit there and guess. You could probably guess a couple of them, but uh, Artrend or anything Infernity related is not on my top five list. So let's go ahead. And uh, clear that misun un misunderstanding up right now, because no, no, no anything in front of you. Like I said, with the banning of Soul Charge, I think that might just be enough. I think that because of them having f technically four launchers uh, was the kind of thing that allowed them to just go dumb. I mean, if they want to ban Soul Charge and ban Launcher, more power to them, or just ban Soul Charge, okay. If they want to ban Soul Charge, put Artrine to one, okay. There's a, there's a kind of ton of different combinations that Konami can do to uh, hurt the deck, but uh, I just hope that uh, any of the combinations involves just banning Soul Charge. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with this top five list. So, uh, you know, I also want to hear you guys' top five list in the comment section below. So be sure to go ahead and comment your top five in the comment section below. And we can just go ahead and have a fun little discussion until, you know, the TCG ban list comes out hopefully soon because I can't wait. Can't wait. So starting it off with number five. This one was not on my ban list prediction, but Super Poly 2-1. Yes, uh, uh, I was kind of ignorant on this one. I, you know, I don't believe that Soul Shadows will get a direct hit on this list. You know, nothing core to the deck, but you know, I can definitely see an indirect hit. Um, I really haven't been paying attention to Shadows. I kind of hate Shadows, and uh, whenever a Shadow deck profile would get uploaded to YouTube, I would kind of ignore it just because I was like, ew, Shadows, I don't like Shadows, I don't really care, I don't want to look at it. But uh, lately I've been looking at it and hearing from people who, you know, uh, duel against the deck, etc., etc., and I've been hearing that Super Poly has just been so powerful lately. And, you know, it's just, Super Poly has been very powerful in the past, it's a very powerful card in the past when heroes were a thing. But it was always that kind of card that was kind of meh, just because you always had to discard, and that discard was kind of like a, kind of like a nick, you know, because you would super poly your monster with your opponent's monster, so you would use your monster, super poly, and discard a card for your opponent's monster, and then you would summon one, so you would still be technically neg one. So it wasn't the best of cards, it was still just a very powerful card in Heroes, especially with the different elements, but uh, in Shadal's hands, of course, Shadows don't miss timing. That Shadow that you discarded will get its effect. Therefore, uh, it's just a very powerful play. And especially since Shadows are getting every single attribute. I mean, they already got Midrash. They already got Nephilim or, you know, Window and Construct, which are dark and light, which are very strong uh, yeah, attributes to start off with in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Then, of course, in the next pack, they are going to get a Grista and Shikinaga, so Fire and Earth. And then, of course, they are getting a Water and a Wind, which we have no idea what they do yet as of the time that this video is going up. Uh, so definitely, Super Poly will be definitely be a card that will be just splashed and maybe main deck at two or three and every Shadal deck if this card does not get addressed. Uh, I think that this is the perfect time to go ahead and just put this card down to one. 
and uh, just move on from it. That way, it's still a very powerful card, but at least you only have one where you pull it off just that once. You know, your opponent may be salty, uh, it turns into a kind of a sacky card, but at least you, your opponent has to worry about getting Super Poly three times. I think one, it's not ban worthy, I think one is enough. I think one uh, would be a totally fine place to put uh, Super Poly as a nice indirect hit to Shadal's. And, uh, you know, just kind of a card that should have been hit a while ago, but this is just the perfect opportunity to hit it down. So that is spot number five. So let's move on to spot number four. Spot number four, I have Fire and Ice Hand both getting semi-limited. I know a ton of people are like, oh, well, Fire and Ice Hand shouldn't be hit. They're not doing anything this one. Well, this current format, sure, but, you know, we're looking at the entire from from the previous list all the way till now. We're looking, and clearly Hat was one of the key decks that was, uh, you know, winning and topping the format. And Fire and Ice Hand are very powerful cards, you know, and I have been, uh, on both sides, I have gotten Fire and Ice Hand and I have Fire and Ice Hand others, and I am not biased enough to state that Fire and Ice Hand should not be hit. Um, I want to go ahead and play the Set Precedence card and go ahead and say that, uh, you know, we have Reborn Tengu at 2, uh, Let's go ahead and put these two down to two as well. I know a ton of decks are like, oh, they'll be like, well, they only play two. Well, I, I play it two. They're still very strong, but it's not as bad, you know. They, they're not banned away. The uh, putting them down to one kind of just end Fire and Ice Hand altogether, and they're not really worthy of just being just killed indefinitely. But two, uh, I think it's just a fair hit. You only get two. Uh, there's been a ton of times where I've, I've tried two in my deck. I've actually tried two Fire and Ice Hand in my deck, and I was like, this isn't working, you know, this isn't as good as just going out hog wild with three. You know, three, not only do you increase, with three, not only do you increase how many uh, pops you get to go ahead and get monster and backer wise, but also you have the higher chance of opening up with them, so increased consistency of getting Fire Stone. Of course, you can always look at it the other way around and be like, oh, well, you, of course you have the higher chance of drawing multiple Fire and Ice Hands, but still, there's not much wrong with drawing multiple Fire and Ice Hands besides not being able to sell from your deck, but of course, you still play them, they still get destroyed, you still get them popped, so you still even out with your opponent. So, I think that uh, a nice Fire and Ice Hand going down to, I think that would be a nice new one, Konami. And uh, I totally wouldn't mind seeing that on uh, this upcoming list. Alright, so that is my number four spot. So moving on, I have Artifact Sanctum. Yes, Sanctum to one. I've seen a ton, a ton of people say Morale Tap, Morale Tap, Morale Tap. No, Sanctum. The only reason why people are saying Morale Tap to one is because they're looking at the OCG and we're like, well, OCG did it. Well, if OCG jumped off a bridge, would you follow them? Sometimes people need to understand that we are pretty much two separate Yu-Gi-Oh's. We came together for world and then we split apart. We are two separate Yu-Gi-Oh's. They are liberal OCG. They are the Democrats and we over here are, we are the, what are we? Uh, oh my God, I forgot the, the word. Was it a uh, Confederate? Yeah, I think it's a Confederate. TCG, we are the Republicans. We we are much more strict with it. They're more free flowing over there. They're like, okay, well, we're cool. Everybody is cool and happy. Every deck is strong. Over here, we're like, no, you get hit and you get hit and you get hit and you get hit and you don't get nothing and you will never get that to start. Fuck your Stratos. That's how we are. And you know, just because uh, you know, uh, OCG hit Moral Tack down to one doesn't mean that we have to do it over here in the TCG. All right. So, I know a ton of people are saying Morale Tack, but here, I'm going to go ahead and explain my reasoning for I, why I think Artifact Sanctum should be the one to get hit, and you guys can go ahead and uh, think accordingly and decide whether you think that it should be Morale Tack or Sanctum. So, one of the arguments is that if you hit Morale Tack but you don't hit Sanctum, then the Artifact deck lives and, you know, the engine will stop. I feel like that's not necessarily true. A. Sanctum is powerful through, of course, Morale Pack. With only one Morale Pack, the engine may die, but it really depends on how much we want this engine to die. We could always just splash in some Artifact Sides, who of course are fairly powerful. Artifact Sides being able to just go ahead and summon during your opponent's turn and be able to block uh, your opponent from, uh, you know, going into the extra deck from XC playing that turn. 
which is a very powerful play. You can also continue to run your Artifact Sanctums and go off into some other plays. You can go ahead and go, you know, Artifact Sanctum, Sanctum, summon a big Latok, big Latok, destroy your one more attack, more attack, summon Pop, make a Pleading. Uh, it doesn't technically kill the engine. It more transforms the engine. You know, we 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 saw at Worlds that putting Morale Tech down to one did not end the engine nor the deck through its plays with the course the it, the second place winner. I think that by putting Sanctum down to one, you the artifact deck will not die because it still has its bite of three Morale Tech. That's that's the bite of the deck. Without Morale Tech, what deck what bite does it have? You know, if you're doing against let's say. Hypothetically speaking, you're doing against an artifact deck where morale attack is at one. They summon that one morale attack, you know, no sweat off your back. And another thing is that with morale attack at one and sigma at three, you can always just summon the green guy. I don't know artifacts, but and recycle it. You know, so you can always just continue to recycle it. So that's not the problem. The problem is that being able to summon from your deck that is very, very frowned upon in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, and uh, I just kind of think that Sanctum, you know, let's say hypothetically speaking, Sanctum goes down to one. Are the artifacts dead? No, not in the slightest. I mean, they kind of got hurt. They can't summon from the deck as much, but you know, they still have three more attack. They three. They still have three ignition. They still have three double cyclone, three MFT, three. You know, they still have their bite. They still have the bite. You know, you they you should still be afraid of the artifact deck if if it's just as a whole because they still have three more attacks. They still have that bite. Sure, they only have one Sanctum, but it's still has that bite you still if you take moral tech you're literally taking the teeth out of an artifact player's mouth just taking their teeth taking them and, and clipping their claws they, they lose it you know but by hitting sanctum sure they can still go ahead and do that play but they still have plays they can still do the whole ignition on my big with talk big with talk set my moral talk big with talk summon i mean ignition set my uh moral attack big with talk summon big with talk destroy my my moral attack summon pop you know they still have plays so all these people who are saying that sitting sanctum will kill the artifact deck and that you should hit moral attack you're wrong it's the other way around hit sanctum i'm playing once again set precedence card sanctum off a of set precedence of gear 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 who is also a trap card who summons from the deck sanctum should be the one that gets hit and not moral attack all right so that's my argument if you still think that it should be more attack, more power to you, but if, go ahead and just take my argument into consideration and make your decision accordingly, and we'll find out who's right and who's wrong on the actual ban list. Alright, so moving on to number two, Vanity's Emptiness to one. Yes, Vanity's Emptiness has always been that up and down card, but it's definitely uh, a floodgate card, and you know, it was supposed to be the replacement of Royal Oppression, but the way that we play it, it kind of is like Royal Oppression, and like I said, it's been up and down. Sometimes it appears in the format, sometimes it doesn't. You know, one of the key reasons why this card is so popular right now is because Fire and Ice Hand aren't in the format. If Fire and Ice Hand were pretty popular right now, then Vanities wouldn't be that popular, because clearly Fire and Ice Hand would go ahead and pop one of your cards, Vanities would go away, and then they would summon. So, you know, that wouldn't be a problem. Because Fire and Ice Hand haven't been played as much, Vanities has gone up this format, and uh, definitely this card has been very powerful. I have been on both ends of it. I have gotten vanity and I have been and I have vanity. I actually have three vanity empties myself and I know how powerful this card is. It is very powerful. You know, some people try to compare this card to Kaiser Colosseum, but at least Kaiser Colosseum you can see from a mile away. You when your opponent goes Kaiser. You can see it at least. Vanity's emptiness just jumps out the bushes and stabs you in the butt, and you don't even see it coming. It's literally like dimensional fissure versus macrocosmos. You know, you committed to that play. You went summon tour god effect, and I flipped up that vanity. So not only did I stop your special summoning and continue to play, but then I also made you do a play that you really wouldn't do if you would have saw it coming. So it being a trap card that you can just simply just play and be able to turn on and off. Um, just simply just, just by sending a card uh, from your field or from your hand to the graveyard and just turning this card off. It's just a very, very powerful play. Uh, clearly the key floodgate card 
and I'm actually surprised that this card didn't get hit in the OCG because the OCG main decking triple vanity just actually they were doing it before we were you know while we were still running hat and you know with the hands and stuff they were over there in OCG land main decking triple vanities and triple compulse and that was pretty much the whole lineup it's just triple compulse triple vanity triple compulse triple vanity and I'm really surprised that compulse nor vanities got hit in OCG man but you know Remember, they're more liberal over there. We're much more conservative, so we're gonna definitely, uh, you know, be looking at this card and being like, yeah, no, this card is definitely not he healthy. So, uh, I would be totally fine with Vanity's Emptiness going down to one. That way, it would be that one card, uh, you know, you, you, it's, you're gonna be, it's gonna be your three MST versus that one Vanity's Emptiness, so hopefully you will have it at the time. Uh, you know, it won't be, it'll still be kind of sacky, but it won't be as bad. It'll be that, that one. So, um, Vanity's Emptiness, I, I think that a good majority of the Yu-Gi-Oh! community is, is in agreement with this one, with Vanity's Emptiness going down to one. Alright, and let's move on to the number one spot. Number one, you guys probably saw this coming. If you know who I am and you know how I am, Soul Charge banned. Banned. Not to one. Banned. Okay, Soul Charge has literally been that card, and as soon as this card came out, we knew that this card was going to be broken. And is it broken? Yes, it is. It is broken. And by the definition of broken, what I mean by broken is that it changed how the game was played. Because of this existence of this card, the game has changed. And did Soul Charge do it? Yes, it did. Yu-Gi-Oh! before and after Soul Charge were to completely two different games, and I know some people are like, oh, Soul Charge, you can't cake, and you can pay the life points. Alright, let's go this up. Life points don't mean shit in Yu-Gi-Oh! Don't mean shit. We play Upstart, we play Solemn Warning, we play Soul Charge, we play Insta Fusion, we play Hero Live, there's a ton of cards where you have to play a life points. We played Solemn Warning when it was at 3, we played 3. When Solemn Judgment was at 3, we played 3. Life points don't mean shit. Life points are just another resource to go ahead and use as long as you win the duel. It doesn't matter if I beat my opponent with 8,000 life points or 100 life points. The thing is, I still win. And Soul Charge is a perfect example of it. So, life point expert doesn't mean shit. You can't attack. So, who gives a fuck? You can still activate all the monsters effects that were summoned through Soul Heart, and you can still continue to summon and exceed and make plays. So clearly, that doesn't matter if you can't attack. Because let's say that I am down on resources and I have Soul Charge. Soul Charge, pay 2000, summon 2 level 4s, XC into Exoton, wipe the field. What? What? I couldn't attack? I couldn't attack because of any- I couldn't do any damage to you anyway because I Exoton, so that didn't even freaking matter. Soul Charge has literally taken decks that shouldn't be topping and doing well and made it top and do well. Also, tiered uh, decks like Satellas and made them even better. It has created hand loops. It has created two-card combos with Quasar. It has allowed, you know, Infernities to win worlds. This card has been the key, key, key card in this format. You know, Vanities was always up and down, but Soul Charge, as soon as the day that it was revealed, it had been broken, and it needs to be banned. Not, not one. Alright, so I just argued why it should not stay at three, because that's just dumb. You know? Why it shouldn't be at one is because then it would literally be just that second card. That play that I just said right there, it would just be even worse and sackier just because Soul Charge is at one. OCG puts Soul Charge down to one, and keep in mind, they're much more liberal than that. No, we're conservative. I would not be surprised if I just see Soul Charge banned. You know, we've had fun with it. Konami released it. We made they made the money off of Dragons and Legends. We've had fun with it, and I'm using the word fun very loosely because this card is stupid. And we've used it for worlds. We didn't hit it in the last list because we wanted it for worlds. It was used in worlds. It did well in worlds and allowed one of the decks that shouldn't have won worlds to win worlds with it. And we're moving on. We're moving on. We we. So we tap and step back away from the OCG, they do their thing, we do our thing. It's time for Soul Charge to get banned. I'm sorry, banned. There's no one. No, I I and I'm not I'm not being no biased, I'm not I've I've felt the power. I've felt the power, I've done plays, I needed to try it out to make sure and make sure that I that it's been, it's broken. And yes, it is broken. Soul charge is broken. There is no if and buts about it. I don't want to hear anybody's argument. And 
If you have some argument of why Soul Charge isn't broken, then please tell me in the comment section below so we can have a debate about this. Because Soul Charge is broken. I don't care what you say. I don't care if some dicks aren't using it right now. It's not being used as much. So, it's still broken. So you're telling me that we have to wait for some dick to break the living hell out of a card before we address it? Well, generally, we have to. But we've clearly saw that Soul Charge has done enough by itself to go ahead and warrant a hit. Two banned. Not to one. That's Saki. We don't need another Saki card in Yu-Gi-Oh. No, thank you. Soul Charge, let's go ahead and just ban it. We don't need it. We can move on. We have three called the Haunted. We're getting three, uh, uh, what's it? Phantom Spring of the Dragon or something, something along the line, which is kind of like another Yang Zing Call of the Haunted. You will have six Call of the Haunted. We don't need Soul Charge. Alright? Soul Charge is just too hard to stop, too hard to respond to, too good of a card, and it should have never been made. It should have never been made, you know. It's what happens when you check some anime show, anime cards and you make them, they get broke. And then this is clearly an example, because this card was very, very broke. Alright, so there is my top five list, so to go ahead and recap. Super Poly to 1, Fire Nance Sand to 2, Sanctum to 1, Vanny's Emptiness to 1, and Soul Charge Band. Those are the top five hits that I would like to see for the October 2014 CCG list. So, I'm sorry that this video is long-winded, but, you know, when I get passionate and talk about things, <laughs> and it, it happens. So, I want to go ahead and hear your guys' top five hits uh, for the list in the comment section below. Go ahead and type in them, and if you guys want to have any debates on any card, let's go ahead and talk about it. So, of course, the TCG ban list is coming up soon. Looking forward to it. I can't wait for it, and um, I want to work on my decks, but I, I need to see what Konami wants to do first before I start making the moves. So, still waiting on that. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. So thanks for listening, and I am looking forward to you know reading your comments and responding to you guys in the comment section below. Thanks again.